Now, if I wanted to ask you, where is the story of creation? I want to find the story of creation in Sefer Breshit. Where should I look? Ah, ha, ha. Oh, Bernie, right? God. Okay. A smart Alec right here in this Down room. In the yeah. yeah. So, Bernie is very smart and very learned. And I anticipated there would be some people in this room that were smart enough to answer that question in the right way. Because, in fact, there are two stories of creation. Now, again, some of you may be familiar with this in general, but we're going to get into some of the details to see the extent and why the argument is that there are two stories of creation. Because, here's my opening statement, and then I'll try to prove it to you. I'd like to believe that in about 20 minutes, you'll be fully convinced. Maybe. I'd like to believe that. We'll see. You'll be excited. Two stories of creation, what are you talking about? The creation story is in chapter one. Six days of creation. Let's just go through the six days of creation. Day one, let's go, let's go, let's go. Don't need your book for this, come on. Lion and Dar. Lion and Dar, okay, Yom Bala. Next, 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 day, day two. No, it's, it's the mind separating, right? The, the water's above and the water's below. Day three, let's go. So now God, after God separates, there's water down and below. Below God separates the, the waters from the land. He creates dry land. So the waters are pushed into the seas, the oceans, and then you have dry land. And the second part of day three is that as a result of having dry land, you have vegetation, right? Okay. Day three. Day four, help me out here. The stars, the, 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 the moon, the stars, the sun, etc., etc. Day four. Day five. Birds, okay. birds, water, okay, birds, and the and the fish of the the fish and the birds of sky. Day six, animals. land animals and Men. human beings. Day seven, we all know Shabbat. That's the creation story. We all know it inside and out. See, you didn't even have to open the Tanakh and you knew the answer. Excellent. Okay, so why do we have this notion that there is another creation story? You'll see in a moment why. And not only is it another creation story, but here's the thing. It completely contradicts the first creation story. And I'll prove it to you. Let's talk about, let's go in order. We're going to do a sequence, a logical order, right? Pro pro progressing from the sort of the most or least significant to the most significant. We just talked about the vegetation, the land, uh, sorry, the earth yielding its fruit and its trees and vegetation. What day did we say that happened? Three. Three. Who was first, man or vegetation? Human beings or vegetation? Vegetation, because we know that's day three, human beings created day six. Open up chapter two. Breshit Perik Bet. Okay. And you're allowed to use your phone if you're using your phone to look at the text. That's fine. I see some people are doing that as it is. And even if you're surfing the net, doing some other things, you know, you can, I won't tell anybody. Next. Chapter two, Perik Bet. Okay, I want you to take a look at Pasuk Bet. Okay, I'm going to read this in Hebrew, and then I'm going to read the, the English translation I have is J, the JBS translation, so if it's not exactly the same as the J translation that you have, forgive me. So here we go. Perek bet pasuk bet. V'chol tziach hasadeh terem yev ha'aretz, v'chol esef hasadeh terem yitzmah. Ki lo yimtir Adonai Elohim ha'aretz, v'adam ayin la'avod et ha'adama. Perek bet pasuk dalet. Translation. Uh, hey, sorry. Perek bet pasuk hey. Okay, so here it is. When, did I mess that up? I'm sorry. Perek bet pasuk hey. When no shrub of the field was yet on earth, and no grasses of the field had not had yet sprouted, because the Lord God had not sent rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the soil. So what is the text telling us? What was lacking from the earth? No, no. What was before man? What? There was no vegetation. And why was there no vegetation? Two reasons. No rain and, and no human being to cultivate it. Which means that prior to the man... Right? And there was no vegetation. What's the next thing? Two psukim later. What does it say? Okay. Actually, in Pasuk Vav, it says, which now we have a source of, not rain, but a source of water to help vegetation grow. And then, what is Pasuk Zayin? And God then, the Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth he blew into his nostrils the breath of life and made man became a living being. Okay, and what's the next pasuk? Two pasuk later, pasuk tet. Okay, and from the ground the Lord caused to grow every tree that was that was pleasing to the sight and good for food. Sequence: What came first, the human being 
or the vegetation and the trees, according to chapter 2. The human being, the trees came afterward, because trees couldn't grow, according to this version of the story, without human being cultivating, etc. So we have here, chapter 1, Bereshi Perk Aleph says that the, that the vegetation and trees were in day 3, before the human being. Chapter 2 says the human being came first. Let's continue. How about animals? What days were the animals created? Five and six. Before the human being. Yes? No? Maybe so? Okay. Let's take a look at Parish Bet. Okay. Pasuk Yudchet. Perek Bet Pasuk Yudchet. Vayomer Adonai Yuhim. Lo tov heyota adam levado. E eselo ezer kenegbo. God says to man, it is not good for man. To, it, God said, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make a fitting helper for him. What's the next pasuk? Don't look inside. What's the next thing that happens? Don't look in the text. What's the next thing that happens? He goes to sleep. Huh. Wrong. He, he brings all the animals. No, together. don't oh. say that. You're not supposed to look at it. Most good for. Oh. We have Tommy. We have Tommy De Chachamin in this room, and Tommy Dot Chachamot, and it's a beautiful thing to see. But most people say, assume that the next thing that happens is that God creates the woman. Except, mommy of your name? Lauren. Lauren is correct. Because the next thing that happens, shockingly so, it says, This is Pasuk Yutet. Blah, blah, blah. Translation. And the Lord God formed out of the earth all the wild beasts and all the birds of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call them and whatever. They, oh. So what's the sequence here? When the animals, when were animals created in the second story of creation? After, after the human being. Not only after the human being, in response to the human being. Shockingly so, that God apparently thought, imagined, that animals would be satisfactory companions for a human being to solve human being lo the man's loneliness. Of course, that didn't work. So after this, right, then God creates, forms the woman from out of the rib of the man. But we see here that in chapter one, Breshi Perak Aleph, we have the animals clearly being created prior to the human being. Whereas in chapter two, Breshi Perak Bet, we have animals created created after the human being and in response to the human being. Let's go on. How about the purpose of the animals? Okay, we just said in Parag Bet, what's the purpose of the animals? Their function is, their role is? To be as your connecto, to somehow to, to, to solve, assuage his loneliness. Parag Aleph, go back to Parag Aleph. What did the animals function in Parag Aleph? Take a look at Pasuk Kafbet. Although that refers to the fish and the birds, it probably applies to land animals as well. In Pasuk Kafbet, what does it say? I assume that the same principle applies to land animals, although it's not explicit there. Meaning, the animals have an independent function. What is their function? To fill the world with more animals. Okay? It doesn't say anything about being created for the sake of the human being. Parak Aleph, the function of the human being, the function of the animals is it, it quite independent of the human being. As a matter of fact, it parallels because as we'll see soon, what is one of the roles that the, hum animal, the human being was given? Thank you. There's more to it, but Puru'uvu is one is of the, the mandates that was given to human beings. So in fact, not only animals are not meant to serve the human being, they're actually given a parallel role in the world. Whereas in Perak Bet, it's very different. They're created after the man and in response to the man. Completely different versions of the, the function, the creation of the animals. Let's go on. How about, and this is a fun one because most people don't detect this. How about the nature of a human being? Now, I'm going to ask you, because you're all intelligent, learned people, you learned this from grade 1 or grade 5 or grade 10, Shiva Flatbush, by, I'm sure, by grade 9, you knew this. What is the defining characteristic of a human being? Human being, what makes a human being unique? Sedem Elohim. Beautiful. And that is a very explicit. I didn't make that up. It's very clear. in Perek Aleph, Pasuk, Kav Zayin, Kav, sorry, Kav Vav, and Kav Zayin. Let's read it inside. Okay, whatever. God says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. They shall rule the fish of the sea, the birds. Okay? And in Perek, in the next Pasuk, 
And God created man in his image, and the image of God he created him. Male and female. Okay. Human being is created image of God. Which means there could not be a greater, a, a greater source of praise than to say that the human being is created in the image of God. You cannot be a more lofty creature than to be in the image of God. And that's what the Torah says of the human being. We have whatever that divine-like quality is, and there's, there's a great deal of parshanut about what is that quality, and I don't want to go into that. Whatever that divine-like quality is that characterizes, right, v'tselem Elohim, we have it, and the other creatures don't. In other words, we are kind of walking, talking, miniature gods. Now let's, take, now let's turn to chapter 2, Perak Bet. And let's talk about the creation of man in Perak Bet. You're ahead of the game. <laughs> Perak Bet, that's flattery, by the way. Perak Bet, Pasuk Zayin. Vayitzel Adonai Yohim et ha'adam afar min ha'adama vayipach be'apav nishmat chayim vayi adam nefesh chaya. The Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth. He blew into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. What is the source of man? What are his origins? Yeah. What? Yeah. Not God at all. Dust of the earth. Dust of the earth. It couldn't be more lowly than that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know what you're about to say. I will get to that. But inherently, the human being, man, is just the dust of the earth. And by the way, what else was created? Minha Adama, animals and and vegetation. vegetation. The same word. The Torah says when God creates the trees, Vayatzmach Adonai Elohim Minha Adama Kol Etz Nechmad. That's Pasuk Tet. So the trees were created from the, from the dirt. And the same way when God created the animals. And the trees, the animals, and the human being were all created from the ground. So if anything, we are just like the other lowly creatures of the world, created from the earth. I'll even... Strengthen this by a, a wordplay that appears. What's the wordplay? The word Adam and Adama. And Adam in this text is, is highlighted that Adam means Adama. Those words are related. Adam, Adam is from Adama, from the earth. There could not be a greater contrast between the image, between the conception of the human being in Perak Aleph and the conception of the human being in Perak Bet. And Perak Aleph, he's this lofty, divine, like creature. He's like ascending the heights. Wow, God is there. And in Perak Bet, he's this lowly, nothing, dust of the earth. Humble origins. Nothingness. Ugh. Now you're going to say, so what makes the human being special? What makes the human being special if he's just dust of the earth? That's what you said. Not similarly. No, not Perakalev. The, the answer is the words that you refer to. It says, that God blew into his nostrils the breath of life. He took this lifeless piece of dust, dirt, and blew breath into him and gave him life. That's what made him special. Inherently, he's nothing. But what makes him special is that God took an interest in him, blew his personal breath, and gave him life. I'm going to use the imagery from Disney. What does it remind you of? Characters. Yes. <laughs> this is this is Pinocchio. It's a it is a still wooden object, lifeless, inanimate object. And somehow the fairy brings this lifeless object to life. What is Pinocchio in essence? A piece of wood. <clears throat> what is the human being? A piece of dirt. What makes him special is that God took an interest in this particular piece of dirt and gave this dirt life. 